welcome friends to my program interesting facts the topic of the day is the gunpowder empires i wonder if you've heard about this term well the period of the gunpowder empires is also known as the era of the islamic gunpowders refers to the epoch of the ottoman safavid and mughal empires from the 16th to the 18th century the three empires were among the strongest and most stable economies of the early modern period leading to commercial expansion and greater patronage of culture while their political and legal institutions were consolidated with an increasing degree of centralization they underwent a significant increase in per capita income and population and a sustained pace of technological innovation the empires were centralized from the eastern europe and north africa in the west to between today's modern bangladesh and myanmar in the east they were islamic and had considerable military and economic success vast amount of territories were conquered conquered by the Islamic gunpowder empires with the use and development of the newly invented firearms so this is how they gained control they had developed a lot of firearms especially cannon and small arms in the course of imperial construction unlike in europe the introduction of gunpowder weapons prompted changes well beyond military organization the mughals based in the indian subcontinent are recognized for their lavish architecture and weapons while the safavids created an efficient and modern state administration for iran and sponsored major developments in the fine arts and the sultan of constantinople based ottoman caliphate and Islam Islamic state also known as the Caesar of Rome was the custodian of the two holy mosques and thus head of the Islamic world their powers wealth architecture and various contributions significantly influenced the course of Asian history the period of gunpowder empires refers to the epoch of the ottoman in present modern turkish was a state that controlled much of southeastern europe western asia and northern africa between the 14th and the early 20th centuries in addition you had the safavid a persian dynasty romanized was one of the most uh, significant ruling dynasties of iran from 1501 to 1736 the safavid dynasty had its origin in the safavid order of sufism which was established in the city of ardabil in the iranian Azerbaijan region it was an Iranian dynasty of Kurdish origin but during their rule they intermarried with Turkoman Georgian Circassian Sunni Muslim people of the northwestern Caucasus between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea in Caucasia the white skinned Europeans and Pontic Greeks who are dignitaries that lived on the southern coast of Black Sea from their base in Ardabil the Safavids established control over parts of Greater Iran and reasserted the Iranian identity of the region thus becoming the first native dynasty since the Sasanian empire officially known as the empire of Iranians to establish a national state officially known as Iran Ottoman, Safavid and Mughal empires from the 16th century to the 18th century were the most muscular empires and amongst the most brawny only because they had developed gunpowder technology. But friends how did this term gunpowder empire come into play well it's a Hatson McNeil concept the phrase gunpowder empire was coined by Marshall G.S. Hatson and his colleague William H. McNeil at the University of Chicago Hatson used the phrase in the title of book 5 the second flowering the empires of gunpowder times of his highly influential three volume work the venture of islam 1974 Hatson saw gunpowder weapons as the key to the military patronage or military centered states of the later middle period which replaced the unstable geographically limited confederations of turkic clans that prevailed in post mongol times post mongol times is an era hatson defined a military patronage state as one having three characteristics first a legitimization of independent dynastic law second the conception of the whole state as a single military force third the attempt to explain all economic and high cultural resources as appanages or grants of the chief military families by contrast if you see today china is not using so much of weapons but is still doing its salami slicing of areas but these countries or uh, these empires did a lot of battle to gain territories such states uh, grew out of the mongol notions of greatness but such notions could mature fully and create stable bureaucratic empires only after gunpowder weapons and as 
specialized technology attained a primary place in military life of the state. McNeil argued that whenever such states were able to monopolize the new artillery, central authorities were able to unite larger territories into new or consolidate new empires. So monopolization was the key. Although Europe pioneered the development of new artillery in the 15th century, no state monopolized it. Gun casting know-how had been concentrated in the low countries near the mouths of Skelt and Rhine rivers in Europe. France and the Habsburgs, generally the rulers of Germany, Austria and Spain divided those territories among themselves, resulting in an arms standoff. By contrast, such monopolies allowed states to create militarized empires in Western Asia, Russia and India and in a considerably modified fashion in China, Korea and Japan. More recently, the Hudson McNeil Gunpowder Empire hypothesis has been turned into a disfavor as it offers neither adequate nor accurate explanation, although the term remains in use. Reasons other than or in addition to military technology have been offered for the nearly simultaneous rise of three centralized military empires in contiguous areas dominated by decentralized Turkic tribes. One explanation called confessionalization by historians of 15th century Europe invokes examination of how the relation of church and state mediated through confessional statements and church ordinances led to the origins of absolutist polities. The first of the three empires to acquire gunpowder weapons was Ottoman Empire. By the 14th century, the Ottomans had adopted gunpowder artillery. The adoption of the gunpowder weapons by the Ottomans was so rapid that they preceded both their European and Middle Eastern adversaries in establishing centralized and permanent troops specialized in the manufacturing and handling of firearms. But it was their use of artillery that shocked their adversaries and impelled the other two Islamic empires to accelerate their weapons programs, just like what you have in modern times, weapons war, weapons race. The Ottomans had artillery at least by the reign of Bayezid, the Ottoman Sultan, and these were used by by them in the sieges of Constantinople in 1399 and 1402. They finally proved their worth as siege engines in the successful siege of Salonika in the Ottoman Kingdom in 1430. The Ottomans employed Middle Eastern as well as European foundries to cast their cannons and by the siege of Constantinople in 1453, they had large enough cannons to batter the walls of any city to the surprise of the defenders. The Ottoman military's regularized use of firearms proceeded ahead of the pace of their European counterparts. The Janissaries, that is Ottoman Sultan's household troops, had been an infantry bodyguard using bows and arrows. During the rule of the Sultan Mehmed II, they were drilled with firearms and became perhaps the first standing infantry force equipped with firearms in the world.